This is a GCE L level pure physics revision series. In this video, we will discuss multiple choice questions that you must know before you take your examination. The questions are related to one topic, which is chapter one, physical quantities, units and measurements, part two. This video is brought to you by Ace with Dennis. Now, learning can be smart, not hard. Don't forget to subscribe and press the bell notification button to stop missing out important updates from us. Also, check out the description area to sign up to our signature course, GCE L Level Pure Physics Full Course, at unbelievable price. It's one time payment. You can study anytime you like, anywhere at your convenience. You can also easily monitor and track your study with Udemy's system. There is no recurring monthly tuition fees. No expensive intensive revision workshops. You don't have to rush to any tuition centers. You don't have to worry on missing any lessons. Sign up our signature online course at description area now. Without further ado, let's get started now. Chapter 1. Physical Quantities, Units and Measurements, Part 2. Question 1. Ashley wants to measure the diameter of a ball bearing using a micrometer screw gauge. The following steps are carried out by Ashley but are in the wrong order. 1. Take the reading on the sleeve. 2. Rotate the ratchet until a tick sound is heard. 3. Take the reading on the thimble. 4. Rotate the thimble to close the anvil and the spindle. 5. Place the ball bearing between the anvil and the spindle. Which of the following is the correct order? A. 5, 2, 4, 1, 3. B. 5, 4, 2, 1, 3. C. 5, 4, 2, 3, 1. D. 5, 2, 4, 3, 1. The answer is B. 5, 4, 2, 1, 3. Make sure you know the steps how to use micrometer screw gauge. You can refer back to micrometer screw gauge topic in case you have forgotten how to use it. Question 2. Mr. Wilson wants to determine the volume of a copper pipe with a length of several meters and has uniform cross section. The pipe is in cylindrical shape and carries water to a tap. He needs to measure the inner diameter, the outer diameter and the length of the pipe to determine the volume of the pipe. Which of the following instruments he can utilize? A micrometer screw gauge and meter rule. B micrometer screw gauge and vernier calipers. C vernier calipers and measuring tape. D meter rule and measuring tape. The answer is. See vernier calipers and measuring tape? Vernier calipers can be used to measure the inner diameter and the outer diameter. Measuring tape can be used to measure length of the pipe. Question 3. Lena uses a pair of vernier calipers to measure the width of a dice. The diagram above shows the measurement. Given that the vernier calipers has a zero error of plus 0.1 millimeters, what is the correct reading of the width of the dice? A 12.6 millimeters, B 13.6 millimeters, C 12.5 millimeters, D 13.5 millimeters. The answer is C 12.5 millimeters. Make sure you know how to take the reading from vernier calipers. You can refer back vernier calipers topic if you have forgotten how to take reading from vernier calipers. Question 4. Given that the zero error of the micrometer screw gauge is minus 0.02 millimeters, what is the actual reading of the measurement shown in the diagram? A 6.63 millimeters. B 6.65 millimeters. C 6.61 millimeters. D 6.05 millimeters. The answer is. 
be 6.65 millimeters. Make sure you know how to take the reading from micrometer screw gauge. You can refer back micrometer screw gauge topic if you have forgotten how to take reading from micrometer screw gauge. Question 5. Three students measured the outer diameter of a test tube using different measuring instruments. The readings that they obtained were 32,000 micrometers, 3.22 centimeters, 0.0322 meters. Which of the following instruments were not used in the measurement? A micrometer screw gauge. B vernier calipers. C meter rule. D meter tape. The answer is A micrometer screw gauge. The precision of micrometer screw gauge is 0.001 cm or 0.01 mm. None of the readings has this precision. The precision of vernier calipers is 0.01 cm or 0.1 mm. 3.22 cm and 0.0322 m or equivalent of 3.22 cm are measured by this instrument. The precisions of meter rule and meter tape are 0.1 cm or 1 mm. 32,000 micrometers or 32 mm is measured by these instruments. Question 6. One complete oscillation of a swinging pendulum happens when the bob moves from X to Y, then back to X again. Which of the following is the most accurate way to measure the time for one complete oscillation of the pendulum? A. Measure the time for 20 oscillations then multiply by 20. B. Measure the time for 20 oscillations then divide by 20. C. Measure the time for one oscillation. D. Measure the time for the bob to move from X to Y, then multiply by 2. The answer is B. Measure the time for 20 oscillations then divide by 20. We need to take the time for 20 oscillations, then calculate the average time for one oscillation, in order to reduce the error, due to human response time, in starting and stopping the stopwatch. Question 7. A student uses a micrometer screw gauge, to measure the thickness of a thin sheet of metal. Diagram 1 shows, the reading when the jaws of the micrometer are closed without anything. Diagram 2 shows, the reading when the jaws are closed around the metal sheet. What is the thickness of the metal sheet? A 2.80 mm. B 2.55 mm. C 2.35 mm. D 2.05 mm. The answer is B 2.55 mm. From diagram 1, the zero error is positive 0.25 mm. From diagram 2, the reading is 2.80 mm. Actual reading is 2.80 minus 0.25. And the answer is 2.55 mm. Question 8. A student is measuring the length of object X and the results are as shown in the diagrams above. What is the length of object X? A 1.1 cm b 0.9 cm c 1.3 cm d 1.5 cm the answer is c 1.3 cm from the second diagram the zero error is negative 0.2 cm from the first diagram the reading is 1.1 cm Hence the actual reading is 1.1 minus negative 0.2 centimeters. The answer is 1.3 centimeters. Question 9. A pendulum swings forwards and backwards periodically passing through, Y, the middle position of the oscillation. A stopwatch is started when the pendulum passes through, Y, the first time. Then the stopwatch is stopped when the pendulum passes through, Y, the 21st time. If the reading of the stopwatch is T, what is the period of the pendulum? A. D over 20 B. D over 21 C. D over 40 D. D over 10 The answer is D. D over 10 
One complete oscillation occurs when the pendulum passes Y two times. There are 10 complete oscillations in this case. The first time passes Y is not counted. Question 10. What is the reading shown in the diagram above? A 7.14 mm. B 7.16 mm. C 7.64 mm. D 5.64 mm. The answer is C 7.64 mm. The reading on the main scale is 7.5 mm. The reading on the thimble scale is 0.14 mm. Hence the reading is 7.5 mm plus 0.14 mm, which is 7.64 mm. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Do you have any thoughts, opinion or experience want to share? Write it down in the comment area. We'd love to hear from you. Also, do you like this video? Don't forget to like and share it to your friends. Until then, see you in the next video. Have a great day ahead.